Hey, what's up, everybody? You are now tuning into the Geeked Up Podcast, your home for entertainment, enlightenment, while adding thought provoking questions with a comedic twist. Join us every Monday and Friday at 10 a.m. for more content and enjoy the show. Oh, uh, here we go. Yeah. Come on. Just rock. It's the inside boys. We step. We step. It's the inside rules, we step. What? It's what? the inside rules, we step. Let's go. Get it, get it. Everybody out there, go scream and shout. About uh-huh. to tell you what inside rules about. What's up? I got you geeking on a Monday or Friday, what so else? I play anything else you did, cause they always keep it real. Still, they be stepping. Step Third eye, open your blink, you missed the message. message. Juju, or should I say, fan favorite. favorite. Big Rome, be highly blessed. Why cute is in the uh-huh. matrix? Half always hating. That's how we start debating. Why cute can calm it down, cause you surely got the patience. Yes. Big, big step. I dub reppin', trying to have the answers to any Every question like Google and Bing what? Ask G's and Quora, when you tune in, uh-uh, check, check it over Time to start the show, so here the intro go The steps, the steps, steps, the steps, 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 steps Yo, steps, what's going on everybody, steps, we back, man, you know, for the regular scheduled program You know what I'm saying, you tuning in This is the Inside Rules Entertainment Crew, give me you geek up podcast, you know what I'm saying Wait, 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 wait. you ain't hear me, the fuck? I said this is a podcast, man. Damn. Uh. Yeah. I am your boy J Millie on the Villain on Hefe Millie. What's going on, everybody? I got my co-host to the left, bottom. They're gonna introduce themselves. But first, if you did if you just tuning in, make sure to like and subscribe and share. Now, Rome, do what you do, baby. Come on, baby. Big Rome blessed and highly favored. Gotta stress that. Can't stress it enough. Thanks full to the most high. Man, y'all already know who it is. It's the host with the most, the fan favorite, Juju AJ. Let's get into another installment. What's up, y'all? It's Q, man. Let's go ahead and uh, let's dive right on into this episode, people. Let's go ahead and just get it jumping. And we're going to start off like we always do. We're going to be about to die. To who? (laughs) (laughs) So then let's go ahead. All right. Let's talk about that. All right. Start off with the NBA. You know what I'm saying? Weekly team report, fellas. 76ers, Nets, (laughs) Bulls. How we looking? Uh, How we looking? 46. We we declined to step to the podium. Thank you. Oh, really? You know what? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get mine out the way. You know, go I'm ahead, jump Brooklyn. on it. Here we are. We got you know a lot saying? going on over there. Um, I'm not even gonna dip in, dab into the turmoil that's going on. But let's we'll just, get to that let's, later. Let's, let's get a let's give a shout out to 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 KD. You know what I'm saying? I know niggas saw you know what I mean Daniel Gafford get put to sleep. You know what I mean? Nigga got laid to 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 bed on that court off a crossover. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's all I got. That's all I got for my highlights of Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's it. Brooklyn you know staying I mean? so, the course. All hey, the uh, I got. Juan, Juan I just want you to take note. I just, I just want you to take note, Juan. You see this whole time you've been here, I ain't said shit to you, right? See, if that was Javen, that was mm-hmm. Javen team that had, had whooped y'all, you would have been here this since we since we hopped on. <laughs> oh, yeah, what, about what about them Brooklyn? What about them Nets, Juan? What about them Nets? You see how we see how we a class act, Juan? You see how <laughs> you know, say we win. It is real calm. Say, it is real niggas calm. Is calm. Niggas is calm. I say nothing. I ain't text. I ain't do nothing. We just, we <laughs> I say nothing. I text. We won the game. We hey, Juan, Juan, you we see, Juan, you see, you see how he intentionally brung up the fact that he didn't say anything to you. You see how he's trying to mentally psychologize you, I'm trying just, to fuck you up right there. He's, he's, he's like, 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 I ain't say nothing. I ain't say nothing about how we fuck you up. You know, say I ain't say nothing about how we fuck you up. But if that was Jamie, he would have damn sure told you how we fucked you up because we <laughs> fucked you up. But I ain't say nothing about it about us <laughs> fucking you up. Like, yo, come on, Juan. was it a misdirection? I don't have. I don't. Yeah. I don't got nothing to say. You know what I mean, Brooklyn, we, we are what we are. You know what I'm saying? Royce O'Neal, I'm not going to lie. Nigga's been giving some Best good minutes. He's been giving some quality minutes. I we got Royce was, O'Neal out here. Definitely was down in that nigga. But I Looking mean, like hey, I'm going to take what I can get. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I still got my, my hopes high for Bubble Warren. Ben, pack oh that my shit God, up, I forgot bro. about that ben nigga. Ben Simmons, yeah. pack that shit up, bro. I'm tired. You know what I'm saying? It's a wrap. Niggas talking you about you got achy him. knees now. Like. Yeah. It's like I I don't think I don't think I'm a person who asks you Ben Simmons to do a lot. I don't I don't think anybody who's supporting Brooklyn right now is asking you to do anything other than play defense and not airball layups. 
that's it. You know what I'm saying? That's that. I mean, it, niggas ain't trying to be too demanding. You know, just just have a good team effort. That's a, a lot for that nigga. That's a lot for that nigga. Uh, well, yo, where, where is Bubble One? Yo, I ain't, where, why he not on the bench? Yo, he not in street clothes. What, what he doing? Yo, he good? I don't know. Hopefully, that nigga is in the lab, though. I hope he's in the I lab. Pray that nigga's in the lab. Bro, he's Damn. back in the he's bubble. Lab, he's back in the bubble. One. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting right. He's back in the bubble, getting right. Back, and they got them yeah, Disney World Sports here. He back in the bubble. Man, getting I better right. see. Trying I better to reclaim. See that nigga. Right. TJ Warren better be training like fucking Goku by the time he t- come back, bro. TJ Warren better come out here like. Like Michael Jeffrey, okay, that's what y'all that's that's what y'all Michael fucking Jeffrey? need. That's what y'all that's need. Gonna be hot, Javen. Yeah. TJ Warren's first shot's gonna be a fucking post fade from the free throw line. That just to let niggas know his bag God got deep. Damn, right? just that. Yeah, just to let just to let niggas know his bag is there. Okay, God damn. All right, Lee, you brought hey, up man. Demar dropping forty six. What's going on with the Bulls? Uh, same old. <laughs> we missing Andre Drummond right now. You know. Uh, I also failed to mention that he dropped 46 in a L. Uh, he actually, he went oh, in a, uh, man. yeah, he had a nice little, oh. uh-huh. well, 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 well. He had a nice, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I'm safe, 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 uh yeah, forty six. Uh, he had to duke it out with Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. That little <laughs> that, that tandem. He had to duke tandem. it out with that tandem. Yeah, uh, him, and J- yeah, him, and, <laughs> hit him and Tatum had a nice little little shootout. Uh, Demar scored mm. more, but Jason Tatum had a double double, so it was nice to see. But we just uh we missed Andre Drummond that night, man. We missed him. We need that size for sure. Um, and yeah, you know, it's just more. You know, we'll 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 get it. We'll get it done. You know, Jamie was like talk this, about I like injuries. The way we uh, bad, what happened? Bro. What's going on with Lonzo? Is there a timeline for him or anything? Who knows, no, man. no timeline at all. I don't, I don't know, know if that nigga can walk. I don't think he can walk. Still, we, yeah. they, they they said, I don't know. He said, he said he was having a hard time getting upstairs and mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah, so I don't know. That's, that's, I, listen, I really feel bad for Lonzo. I, I hope he. I don't know what back alley doctors his dad is taking him to. <laughs> that's they fucked up the first surgery. That's why we still here. And you mm-hmm. know, what I'm saying now they said, okay, this time for sure he got the right surgery. So now you know we just gonna pray that man. you know you know what side note Praise while we're up. on while we're on your bulls just right quick I'm gonna just mm. give a huge fuck you to Zach Levine damn for just dropping twenty in the fourth like niggas Jeez. didn't ask for that bro. like Brooklyn I don't think I don't I don't yeah. believe we deserve that you know what I'm saying I'm gonna just leave I that think y'all did I think y'all did I'm gonna just leave that there, though. I think I did the same that I think I just said that grab us by the ears is crazy the shit that's insane Zach Levine grab y'all by the ears. That nigga had like six points before that happened. Exactly. Man. I'm like, oh, Zach, be quiet, man. Okay, okay. All right. <laughs> it's time. Right. All right. It's all right. Seventy Sixers. What you got for us, Jamie? You got stuff up in town, baby. We, 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 how we looking over there in Philly? Uh, yo. How are we looking? Philly cheesesteaks is good, and um, Philly's good too. <laughs> 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 Any more questions? Y'all got some. Uh, y'all got some. Uh, some rays of hope. You know, Tyrese Maxey showing that he can get it done. You how's, know, when he needs James? to. How's How's James? How's, how's he? Doing? How is James doing? How's that James? is a good question. Hold on, what y'all say? Okay. <laughs> uh, James James is as James does. Mm-hmm. Harden in hard times will pursue what James will do. What James do. Oh, hard times with hard. Niggas, niggas wanted Houston Harden so bad. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome. All you did was yeah. stunt the growth of Tyrese Maxey. Right. You're welcome. All y'all did was stunt the growth of Tyrese Maxey, who could have been y'all franchise point guard. We're just a little hurt right now. We'll be back soon. Uh, it's, it's early in the season. Uh, no further questions, please. <laughs> Well, I got. Well, we're gonna uh, go ahead and cycle back to the Nets, though. Actually, and in particular on the Nets, we're gonna talk about Kyrie Irving. So we're gonna go ahead. uh, We're gonna keep it on with the team, but really, we're going into the Kyrie story. So just to start it up from the top, Kyrie, I believe, posted a link to a documentary, and this documentary was deemed anti-Semitic. It has had some lies about the Jewish community within it, apparently, and. Uh, when asked about it, and not only asked about it, pretty much asked to apologize. The first go around, Kyrie went on and doubled down, said, "Man, I, I, I don't agree with everything that was said, but hey, man, I can't be anti-Semitic if I know where I come from." 
So, hey, I'm he pretty much doubled down. But so did the people that wanted him to apologize. They also doubled down. <laughs> they went ahead and they uh, gave him a, a minimum of a five game suspension from the team, unpaid, of course, as well. And then let me go ahead and pull this up here. There is a list of items. We'll go ahead and put air quotes around that. Okay, items that he must complete. Yeah, requests, requests, quote unquote, that he must complete in order to return to the team. And it's six of them. So go down. Here we go. Apologize slash condemn the film that he had uh, posted a link to. Donate $500,000 to anti-hate causes. He needs to go through sensitivity training, anti-Semitic training, meet with ADL Jewish leaders, and meet with Joe Sy to demonstrate understanding. They said they had that boy doing side quests like he was in my career. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> he then has he's he, since then he has put out an, an apology on his Instagram about what he did and you know making sure. But I guess really quote unquote what he should have said during that sit down the first go around is what they're really wanting him to say. So f- fellas, what y'all think about this? First yay, now Kyrie is looking like it's a listen, uh hey. Listen, after after what Kanye posted from his from his Hollywood trainer to what they got Kyrie doing, I'ma just listen, for the sake of the inside wolves team, the geeked up crew, I'ma plead the fifth. Y'all don't want to hear what I got to say. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, <clears throat> that's what I'm going to do. I will first start by saying I in no way, shape, or form, much like everybody up here on this panel, condone any type form of hate towards any person. You know, um, I think everybody has their own opinion. And I think a lot of times opinions um and and perceptions that other people have on certain things can cause people to you know be persuaded in a different in a certain way um i think Kyrie is a man i've i've you know of his own as we've known to see he's deep rooted in his faith um deep rooted in in what he believes in and um i feel that it could have just came maybe came to a little bit more of an internal you know, resolution. I don't think maybe it had to be so big, um, you know, as far as the way it blew up. I feel, I feel, part of me feels as almost as if, you know, he's being a little bit humiliated, and, you know, or trying to be made him a little bit humiliated. That's just how I perceive it. Like everybody else, you know, has a perception of the, you know, recollection of events and what's, what's happened and transpired. And my perception is that, you know, it looks like a little bit of humiliation is is trying to be put on Kyrie, which I don't think any man should have to go through. Um, I do like that he apologized. I definitely thought that that wasn't, you know, particularly right at first, uh, because if you people are saying that you have offended, you know, somebody just in your right nature uh, to address that a little bit more than he did, you know, before he did that. Um, and I think that uh, we might have seen the last of Kyrie playing basketball. That's just my opinion on that. I think we oh, might have seen the last. Really? Of that. Hang on. Can you expand on that last point? Just the final point. You really think he's out the league because of this? I think we see what we see what transpired here with uh, with, with the Boston Celtics and email Doka uh, Doka. <laughs> Uh, with the whole indefinite suspension, they love using that indefinite. You know, hey, you know, you get a chance to come back. You know, keep you on the but string. Right. You keep you on the string. I think that you know, when you're talking about a a man's livelihood at that as well too. You see, he's getting his Nike deal stripped away. People are burning Nike shoes. You know, and and you know, I'm sure a lot of deals, other deals will f- probably follow suit as far as falling through the roof here from. And I think that. Um, I just, I just think, like I said before, Kyrie is somebody that is very knowledgeable of himself and deep rooted in his faith and understanding of what he knows and what he reads. And I think that is going to take a lot more than just some quest for maybe Kyrie to feel like he can even go back to a place like that, that felt like he feels as if y'all can just take me out so quickly, you know, without maybe some type of internal, once again, keyword internal resolution. Um, I think that he just might Maybe he might even back away from, you know, the NBA. Maybe they may say it's not enough. Oh, you know, 
he didn't we, we don't think he did it in a way that we want him to because at this point his the fate is in, his fate is in the hands of the commissioners of the league and everything so we don't know what is going to pursue after these quests have been fulfilled it could be more six more quests we don't fucking know so i and i say that to say Kyrie is also in his what he uh he came in what 2011 i think that's when he got drafted yeah, yeah. so this is uh, this is his 11th season in the league you know Basketball is a sport that is, you know, it, it does, you know, project some longevity. But you know, as you get up there in the ages and life goes on and things like that, and he's getting, you know, to his championship windows. You know, he might feel as if that maybe it's time to step down. Who knows? But I'm just saying, I think this it might be, may not be. I hope not, because I love you, Kyrie. I love watching you play basketball. You're my favorite player currently. You know what I'm saying? You know, I ain't no, I ain't on your dick, nothing like that. But feel me, you are one of my favorite players to watch. I know everybody else, a lot of other people feel that way about you too. So I hope y'all can figure something out. I really do. Yeah. You can go ahead, um, Yeah, pretty much just to pretty much piggyback on on what FA said. Um, I think the biggest thing to take away from this whole ordeal is the fact that once once a person has a quote unquote track record, it's a lot easier to pin that said person in a negative light towards anything even if it's for this example uh based off the film that he posted on his show that people were saying he was promoting and saying that you know he was advocating for hate speech and everything like that i think the biggest thing with this is you know just from what i gained you know in his honesty he he wasn't aware you know from just from what i gained and you know and he seemed like he was very apologetic initially you know it, it's not like he was and, and like i said this is my eyes that he was trying to you know what I'm saying down talk any community or race or religious people you know what I'm saying it, it, i didn't gain that from him speaking or just even him posting that but the thing that i noticed is um this is just a very unfortunate situation to be in to have literally the whole world against you and to not have no one stand next to you by your side. No one. You see ex NBA players, you see former teammates, you know what I'm saying? Pretty much going along with the same script that's being told about you on all these major platforms. And I I feel like it's very unfortunate yeah. to just see that, you know, uh, of of all these people and for the NBA to be this so-called brotherhood, I just feel like it's very unfortunate that uh I see yeah. these big media outlets and stuff like actually preying on a man's downfall to lose his livelihood his yeah. career you know what i'm saying he's man feeds his family man. but it the the negative things that people try to gain or try to put these negative words in his own mouth um i feel like people are expanding on it only because of like i said he has a track record so to speak and i i honestly like hefe said i feel like this could be his his end only because of I remember with the situation with COVID, you know what I'm saying? He didn't go get the shot. Mm -hmm. Brooklyn asked for him to come back. So, I mean, I'm not, I don't know Kyrie personally. However, I just know if he's truly as 100% dove in on his belief and in, in what he feels is right and, and as far as not being silent anymore and speaking up and or educating as he, as he said, I mean, I honestly feel like he would look at it and say, well, you know, if this is what you guys want to do, then that's fine. I'll part ways, whether it be, like I said, the NBA, Nike contract. I, I don't feel like he's going to get that either. But, um, yeah, it's just definitely an unfortunate situation just as, for him. I can't even imagine having, you know what I'm saying, like the whole world pinned against you. Like I said, whether it be teammates, ex-teammates, former NBA players, it's just a very unfortunate situation for Kyrie right now. But I do hope that there is a a light at the end of the tunnel for him um, to just just focus on what is important to him, whether it be continuing to play basketball or not. You know what I'm saying? Just do what makes you happy and you feel is right in your own passion. Because um, it's, it's, it's pointless trying to please others if you don't make yourself happy. So, and I don't want to see a miserable Kyrie, so... Um, that's just how I feel about the situation. Is there something you wanted to say, add in there, Jason? No, nah, I mean, um, Juan definitely touched on the point as well, too, as far as the brotherhood, uh, the NBA. I didn't particularly, I'm just going to come out and say, I didn't particularly like 
how LeBron yeah. uh, talked about the situation. Somebody mm-hmm. he calls a brother, you know, there's somebody, you know, I, I just don't, you know, because I, I, I even seen it on Twitter, you know, niggas was like, you know, come on, Brian, you know, you could have also been like, you know, you could have also de-escalated, you know, the whole situation or the notion of him being the standard third, but, all, you know, and also expressing that you as well do not condone any form of hate, you know, on any, upon anybody else. Um, but you know he could definitely say you know I know Kyrie as, as a man you know he, he's a well spoken young man you know he, he he I know he never means any harm when he does things like that like I just felt like that could have been said as well too you know with in addition to protecting yourself if, if you need to so but that's all yeah that's all LeBron essentially being the current face of Nike that is the, ex- the response I expected that's all that's he gave the response I expected him to get I can see that I don't agree with it but I can see that yeah. Yeah, same. It's, it appears as though that when things like this are going on, it's a whole different level of games and politics being played that pretty much everybody else is just not privy to. Because <laughs> yeah. there's all types of unspoken words, and like you said as well too, and y'all, I think both of y'all said it as a matter of fact. A lot of people's responses to this were quite telling because I said this last time on the previous episode when we talked about Kanye, and I still feel like this as it's happening to Kyrie again. Bro, I feel like I'm in the twilight zone because I feel like I'm watching p- things happen to people broad daylight that they're saying are going to happen to them. And everybody is just like, yeah, well, apologize, nigga. You should yeah. like, what is going on? What What is happening? And that and that's really as vague as you and I would like to be with that because it's just like what broad daylight, bro. What's going on right now? Like yeah. even down to the donate. Anywho, I don't, I don't, I don't 100 percent understand uh, exactly what point the NBA turned into a reality show because that's honestly how I feel. Watching this whole ordeal transpire currently is a reality show. The increase in media, you know, that's everything is everything is so especially now, especially now, like questions before, um, and that's the shit that be getting me tight. And I feel I get you, I get it. It's your job, it's your job, it's what you gotta do as a reporter. You gotta bring out those tough questions. I get it, you know. But this is like, damn, like let the nigga talk about basketball too. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, let him ask the nigga about the game or some shit and stop like beating the questions in and shit like that. But everything stems from like Twitter, like from Twitter posts, you know, people pull they pull the questions from Twitters, you know, Instagrams and things like that, and the shit that they see and they you know, they think about it like that's what media has turned into is like is literally just verbally asking what you what you probably would have tweeted what you probably would have posted on instagram or whatever and um that's the shit that's you know kind of troubling with the media that's like this is gonna be the new era um of the league as far as that's concerned i kind of want to sprinkle this out here just for a different viewpoint on it as well and it was um just something just want your guys thoughts on this really the other aspect that people are that i've seen people are taking this from as hey this is kind of like they're just following protocol here really because there have been team owners that have lost their teams or a lot of rights because of things that they've said that were leaked that were leaked and Kyrie said something that at least the public's views is on par with those things so he also is being rightfully punished just like those team owners were for being racist because he's saying he, anti-Semitic stuff. So they're saying, hey, punishment, you got to keep it fair. Did, and is and this is me genuinely, genuinely asking, and then I'll follow up. Did he actually say something that was anti-Semitic? Did he, actually he didn't say, say anything. No. He never and said anything. He posted my, the, no, that documentary he posted, though, was that's my problem. anti-Semitic. And, and I, I get saying. that. I get that. I get that, and that's and that's definitely. And one thing I wanted to say too before I get to what I'm about to say now is that people need to you gotta read, really read, to understand what you what you what you are looking into before you go and tell others and educate others about it because you have to understand the risk that come with such teachings and things like that. You know what I'm saying? History is history for a reason, and things you know are 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 written for a reason. And once you expose you know certain things or you tell certain things to people, you're gonna you have to know that you're shaping minds in that form as well too. But what I will say is that I don't like the fact that it seems like he's really being, you know, terminated in a sense from everything because of the fact that he didn't want to, like, formally give an apology at first. 
that's that's kind of where my my you know my qualm with that is it's like it's not even the fact that he really did say something and like but it's like because he didn't get the apology about something that he retweeted it's now coming off as oh he completely agrees with this and these these are things that he's also saying as well too and you know if he did say some things like that then, then Kyrie you know you got to see me catch a fade because I'm I'm up here you know what I'm saying kind, kind of you know what I'm saying I'm, I'm up here you know telling two sides of a coin. I'm not saying I'm siding with you, Kyrie. I'm saying I'm, t- I'm telling two sides of a coin, which is mo- most people won't do. Most people won't tell you two sides of the coin. They give you, you know, they give you heads. They won't give you tails. You know what I'm saying? So, I'll, I'll take this conversation another ten step in my soapbox and say this unrelated because, like I said, I still any opinion I give that's true to myself right now, and this is not going to be in favor of uh, Inside Wolves' image. But I'll say this, bro. It's in situations like this that always stress the importance to me of black ownership and black people never like to like think that that's an important thing like, mm-hmm. when, like you know because when, when nothing's yeah. happening so it's whatever but when stuff like this happens it's it 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 we feel the impact of not having a platform of our own more than we ever do when yeah. like we're never able to express ourselves our opinions free free you know free to our culture free to our beliefs that's why, and that's part of the reason we have to walk around acting the way we do on certain topics. It's it like Quinn said, it it's normal for people. I, I, I can understand him feeling like he's in a twilight zone because, bro, you're living in a world where people will walk around knowing shit, knowing that the next person knows it and can't say shit about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. No, nah, you know you hit the nail on the motherfucking black, head. Black ownership. Yeah. Nipsey yeah. talked about it. You know, I talk about Nipsey all the time because that's definitely one of my you know favorite figures in life. And he talked about that shit all the time. You know what I'm saying? He went back home to Africa and he understood the meaning of having what you have as a as a you know as a young or as a black man, black woman, or whatever your religion, you know, your race is, is having what you have and making it yours because you have to at the end of the day, if you don't own it, if you don't provide and and give yourself the outlet, you're you're literally putting your hand your life or you're putting your business, whatever, in the hands of somebody else to do it for you and you're expecting based off of handshakes, based off of contracts, things that people could generally turn around and say fuck you over, you know, or put some shit in there that they can later say fuck you over to make it so that way you now have nothing. But if you own, yes, if you own you, nobody else can. I remember that. I think, I think another, just to close my topic on this, I think another thing for, that's important for everybody in this situation, um, whether it be viewers or anyone, just do your research. Listen to like the full interviews, like actually dive into what exactly is being said and what isn't being said, because it's it's a lot easier for your casual person to just get a notification on their phone from ESPN saying Kyrie the martyr or Kyrie the undefiant person. It's easy to see it and just click on it and just believe whatever the media is telling you. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to say, just please just go ahead and do your due diligence and study yourself get that information and your knowledge from yourself don't believe everything that is being forced through the media and like i said pretty much like what hefe said i'm not 100 percent siding with Kyrie, and i'm not buying into the nba of course at all with their decisions on, on what happened but um just like i said just do your research man just definitely do your research indeed Great shit there, gentlemen. Great shit there. And uh, speaking of that media shit, one that you was talking about, doing that research, keeping your eyes on that media, indeed, you know what I'm saying? We yeah. should uh, we should talk about, very briefly, a misconception on a much lighter note that is going on for a couple of days now. Mm-hmm. Niggas talk about Snoop Dogg smoking about <laughs> 75 to 150 joint slash blunts a day. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> and, um... Yes, sir. 75 to 150 <laughs> blunt slash boy, joints a day. That is healthy. You ask me, man, boy. Healthy. Oh, my oh, God. Nigga, you, well, must, you a great, vegetable at that man, point. Oh, my God. Boy, yo, that is vegetables, Quinn. That is broccoli. <laughs> nigga, niggas, uh, niggas are sitting up with smoke emanating from his mouth. Just, <laughs> crazy. Niggas just a uh, hustle. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, just a, a empty exoskeleton. Yeah, empty, spinach. Empty exoskeleton. Spinach. 
peas, green beans, broccoli, whatever you want, it, man. Come on, what? man. Look, 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 look. Right there. Like They're you said, green. one do do that research because Snoop Dogg mm. had to dispel mm. that rumor yeah. very quickly. He if, put out a video. <laughs> that, yeah. that is like even like close to being true. Like, first of all, you obviously, you obviously do not a heavy. You don't smoke. You don't, you don't smoke. do that. Yeah, you don't, you don't do that. You don't That's smoke. not you don't that activity you partake in. <laughs> but in second of all, I was going to say that. That's not possible while remaining a functioning uh, human being. Like, you, you <laughs> all the TV shows he's on, bro, ain't no way in hell this nigga got time to do that. Way, yeah. no. All no the TV shows. Yeah. Seventy-five. Of you. This is not enough yeah. time in the day to fit that in. Like There's not even seventy-five. Not, yeah. Like let's There's let's not. just let's just separate the fact that these niggas went from a seventy-five to one fifty gap. Just yeah, what a yeah, baseline yeah, yeah. That's, 75, that's crazy what? 75 in one day is crazy alone. <laughs> well, like, the fact that them niggas say anywhere, the fact that they say it can be anywhere from 75 to 150. It's like, all right, bro. Nah, yeah. Well, yeah, I ain't going to lie, bro. I don't give a fuck about the money or none of that, bro. If I have oh, a nigga tells me I smoke 75 blunts a day, I think I might got to stop fucking with that. Bro, just bro, off the street, bro. bro. Yeah, yeah. That was your margin. <laughs> Your margin of error is fifty blunts. That means this nigga. That means in the middle of the day, this nigga Snoop Dogg is. Uh, I feel like good today. I think another twenty five blunts will suffice. I mean, like, like he just has fifty blunts to move, yeah. Yeah. move around. Yeah, this, this, this Ross Teddy, yeah. That nigga got twenty five blunts that, to do it. That Bring in another twenty five. That nigga got too much access to good gas. For me to believe that he's smoking enough mid that 75 is the minimum a day. There's no way. Oh, no. Nah, no Snoop Dogg 1,000% no smokes way. mid. Snoop Dogg does not smoke uh, a preem. Uh, that nigga Snoop Dogg smokes mid. Well, how do you come to this you, conclusion? Right. What makes you say that? Bro, no OGs smoke gas, bro. No OGs out here hitting thrax every day. <laughs> Nick, it's already enough for these niggas to like get up and move well, in their bodies and, and be but, here doing mean, shows and being active and bro, that that's nigga is I mean, that's, that's he hit he he, he, hit, he hit he hitting some cool little shit to get himself going, you know what I'm saying? Get his mind right. And nigga on Skywalker and, OG. Man. Well, Skywalker Diesel. OG, no, he's not on Diesel. Bro. Runs. No, no, no. <laughs> White, pink, and black. <laughs> He's all right. White, pink, and black. Believe, if y'all want, want, want me to believe that Snoop Dogg is hitting 10 months of, of sour diesel a day, like, y'all are tweaking. Y'all are tweaking. Yeah. I mean, that's, I that's, think, not, yeah, I that's think not hard to tweaking. believe. So you got to think, bro. I, I mean, I don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't know about other people. Oh, Trevor. For me, niggas' tolerance just increases over time. So that That's what I was getting ready to say, Juan. I believe it. I don't, I, I, believe don't, I don't. Thank you, I don't Thank see you. Mid, though, because uh, uh, I, like, yeah. I don't see the that mid. Nigga, I can't I see that. Yeah, way higher than mine. So I, I can't I see that. that. See, no, nah, because Lee not wrong about the old has not really. That's what you know, I said, Jacking it, gas part, like that. It's, it's, I say he out here, but, it, but it's because they it's because they don't smoke that much, and so when they do, they can't be off their rocker like that. But I don't think that nigga has stopped smoking since he was probably fucking eleven. Like this nigga just this nigga just still smoking. Ten blunts of sour. He is going to like, bro. He's not doing that, bro. He's gonna feel that at his ripe age. Look, look. I, I, all I'm thinking, I think he might. I think he might get used to it, man. You may not be feeling it for that first week, but you know what I'm saying. Two weeks, three weeks, a month of doing that shit every day, it probably get to a point. This is just regular to you at that point. Let alone decades. You know what I'm saying. But I can definitely see them. I know at least in order to get through the ten, I'll, I'll concede on this. I think three of them got to be mid. Out of ten, I think three of them got to be mid, just so he can hit that ten number. You know what I'm saying? He yeah, probably smoked some mid. Three. Probably smoked some mid. mid just the you know what I'm saying. He smoked two real ones, and then the mid just Oof. to go ahead, level it out, and then he go ahead. <laughs> just to, just niggas, to niggas said that shit. Oh my god! It, it's it's, it's the uppers and downers. Going. Nah, keep the that, high going. That's yeah. that's how don't that's how don't white folk be do be uh doing it. You're like, yeah, I gotta do the coke just to get me up. You know what I'm saying? And then. <laughs> And I do the hair and just to relax, you know. What I mean? yeah. <laughs> nah, bro, don't do it. Come on, man. Nah, it was crazy. I said that's them, I heard them there along Snoop along is... the same lines of people saying, you know, um, you know, like smoking like a Rello is gonna boost your high. Okay, all right. You you hit that. You hit that pure tobacco. Then go ahead. <laughs> it'll boost guess. your high. It'll I mean, boost it will, your lightheadedness. At least I for, guess 
for for the, yeah. the boost that you get is is for me that? it's not it's not worth hitting no nah. it's not it's not because nah. it's not actually a boost here it just makes you no. more lightheaded yeah, so i mean yeah. i yo i guess i'm walking around with work, fucking but... headache oh. yeah, yeah that's that's a little crazy i ain't gonna lie yeah. right there I, I wouldn't know that i don't, I don't do that But you right, know, right, right. You, you know how this goes, gentlemen. You gotta go on the roller coaster of emotions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So so we're going right back oh, into it. You feel oh, me? Coming man. right off that oh, glorious man. high of Snoop Dogg to talking about the unfortunate, untimely, yeah. and despicable demise of one third of the Migos takeoff. Mm. Was shot and killed, I believe, during a dice game. And yeah. not only was he shot and killed during that situation, but he actually wasn't even involved in the action. Got, got him shot and killed. He was just there. So, yeah. moment of silence for the man. Take off. Take off. Okay. Yeah. What y'all think about that? Talk Let about it. Go, uh, take. Mm. Mm. What y'all got? What y'all got? What y'all got? Take off. I get my opinion. It's, here's how I felt about it so far. It's, it's like you said, as as terrible, as despicable. Any any you know, what I'm saying adjective you want to use to describe how how down bad of a situation it is, bro. It it's been hard for me to draw up true feelings of sadness, just based off like how how meaningless the death was. It was so meaningless. It it like like. That's I think that's the that's the that's the most sad part about it. It's just like how like it, it didn't have to happen. Like there was literally no nothing behind it, bro. Like like you get shot, like, bro. I'm not even gonna go into it, but it's just been that's been that's that's the hardest part about it to me. It's been hard to you know feel, you know, it is. It's been hard, bro. Um, at least from. Pretty much like what Lee said, uh, be- because of how just meaningless it was for for this event to happen, and just the context that's that we've been provided, you know, what I'm saying through over the passing days is just like I don't know, I I don't know, man. Um, I honestly don't know. You know, um, one thing one thing that I definitely can't say though that I do feel is very unfortunate is the fact that it it takes two seconds for, for niggas to immediately pull out phones and flashlights and get the recording on a lifeless body. Like because bitches. they're a celebrity for likes and, and, and shares. And it's just like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know at what point niggas started glorifying, you know what I mean? To just get or do whatever it is to get that little, you know what I'm saying? A little five second clip of, of what's going down in the rundown and you, you hear like the audios and shit. It's just, it's just really sad to see, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Somebody is literally losing their life. You know what I'm saying? And the first thing niggas want to do is just grab a phone and say, Oh, yo, look at yo right there dying. You know what I'm saying? His last little breath. You know what I'm saying? Like niggas family, now. niggas family see that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And it's just crazy to see that that shit is so common. So common, bro. Shout out to Gilly for exposing niggas for that shit too, man. Like, shout out to Gilly because what do you say? Is... Shout out to Gilly for exposing. No, that what did shit, he man. say? Oh, uh, was literally the same thing one said, man. Like, oh, really? just oh. like, yeah, same as that shit. Like, y'all niggas is bitches. You know, every yeah, time so, some shit gonna go down, y'all niggas gonna pull out your phones instead of calling for help and some shit like that. Like, come on, man. Did, oh, you that shit. reminds me of that um situation with them kids. I don't know where it was. Whoa. I think about it been in New York where them kid kid bro put a gun on them put a gun right in kids face and everybody surrounded them watching the fight just pulled out their phones and was recording yeah. it that was it i can't, it. It I can't respect <laughs> gilly for saying that bro unless well i don't know his whole quote so i'm hoping he did but i'm saying to call them the people the bystanders of the bitches instead of calling these the niggas the niggas that was partaking in the bitches bro why are you pulling out guns over at a dice game bro why is this why is this a thing bro why are you shooting oh, yeah, your no. old man's in the back, bro? Why are you shooting your old man's in the back of the head? Like, so, bro, so like, call them niggas. Let's clear it up. Call, yeah, call them they, niggas. Yeah, hold clear on, it up. Hold so, because I'm gonna clear it up because it, it it actually wasn't over a it dice game. They said it was so Quavo and and some other nigga that they was in the club. I think they was they come from the club or something like that. They was arguing about like basketball. They was arguing about basketball. They was talking about basketball for a minute. They was going back and forth. 
Um, and then nigga, and then Quavo was pretty much like, man, fuck that or whatever, walked away. And this is like from the video and everything. And then out of nowhere, you just see like this big tussle, and then boom, ka -ka -ka -ka, you know, shots fly out or whatever. And yeah, that's but it was over a basketball. It was over basketball. It wasn't over the dice or nothing like that. So they wasn't shooting. I would have rather that. niggas let me believe it was over the dice. Because at least the yeah. money was involved. Well, man. no, I, I had to. I had to let damn. you know what yeah. it was about. Though. I had to let you know. No, no, that, that's clarified. fair. Bro. But damn. We... Yeah. No. I, yeah. Damn. Damn. Yeah. Damn. I thought yeah, no, bro, damn. Black, black men are emotionally shocked. These niggas need to do something, bro. There, like, there needs to be mass awesome, therapy, man. bro. Awesome. Bro, yeah. like, why? How are your how are your emotions so uh, uh, so running so rampant that you kill a nigga over a talk about basketball? I mean, I, I'm just bro, I gotta. Black there's a people story. have and, are, and, and are unable is, to compartmentalize their emotions, bro. Like, this is that's an actual problem in our community, bro. That's why that's yeah, why that's, that's, that's why women have to feel in danger when they reject a the nigga. They have to reject a nigga as 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 fucking peacefully as they fucking can to hope this nigga doesn't attack her. Niggas, niggas, like, bro, that's so sick. What are you about to say? There's a vid there's a story that I heard online. It was from a man, Mike Rashid was a guy. Check out that goose channel. Good guy. Uh, he put a, it was a story that he had about while he was in jail, and it goes to talk about what you just said, Javen and Andy as well. Both of those things combined. He said that he was pretty well respected in prison just because intellectually he was good and physically he was cool. And a lot of the people in prison came to him to talk about like squashing things or to at least come to him for advice just about problems they were having in prison. Mm -hmm. And this speaks to what you were saying, Lee. He said, this is a quote in, it, in itself. So let me get this straight. I'm talking to Mike Rashid to the prisoner here. So let me get this straight. You want to kill, you want to stab this nigga because he called you a bitch because you were cheating in chess and he caught you. And that was like the most profound shit to these niggas they had ever heard. They were like, wow, bro, I never thought about it like that. You definitely right. Let me go ahead and shut out. Okay. And so I go on to say that, Lee, I, I hear you because you're definitely right about that. But it makes me wonder how deep does this problem really go and where do we go to actually address it at truthfully? Because that for that to be your mindset, because I'm trying to be more empathetic as a person. I'm trying to put myself in other people's shoes. You know, I try to think about like a lot of the privileged people on camera, like the Karens and shit in those videos. You got to remember thinking coming from money, coming from privilege. If you were five years old and anytime you didn't like something, it was just gone. Any problem you had just disappeared. Hey, mom, I don't feel like doing this anymore, even though you spent X amount of money on it. And your mom was just like, hey, it's OK. Go ahead. Play. I don't really matter. Anything, anything you ever wanted, never a Christmas, never a holiday went by. You didn't get anything. I could imagine how decades of that would lead you to getting your ass whooped for talking out your neck at 40. Or how you would end up in a situation where, similar to takeoff situation, you ain't have shit from that young age all the way up until you went and took it at your adult age. I can understand how situations like that, it's hard to contain your emotion and, it's hard, and you make irrational decisions like that because that's the only ration you've had growing up. And it's really sad. And we as a community definitely need to help each other out more in trying to fix these things and especially trying to figure out the root problem and addressing that root problem a lot because it's yeah. beyond just like, <laughs> why would you do that? These niggas have no like concept of like that they're, they're, they're the right no, the logical they, they right move in, isn't even yeah. in their head. It's not they're even like unable an option to to process their emotions. Like they literally are un they don't have the gene, they don't have like that in them. They don't have what it takes in their mind to process their emotions in a healthy way, bro. It's bad. Like, like, it's really it's bad. bad. It's it's terrible. It's yeah, terrible. Niggas, niggas just got I mean, man, listen, yeah. Listen. I understand. I understand the streets. I understand. You know what I'm saying. But also as well too, it's definitely you gotta understand when things are just not worth it, yo. And it's never worth killing anybody. Don't don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted. I'm saying I understand. I understand the streets in the sense of I know how niggas talk. I know how niggas get down. You know what I'm saying. But it's never. You gotta understand when it's not worth it, yo. Like. And it's it, it, and the second thing too, like yo, it, obviously dummy ain't had no aim, yo. He was because uh, they said he caught the they said he caught strays. It wasn't even aimed at him, mm -hmm. so obviously he ain't it even had no aim. So what the fuck you got? What, why you got the strap anyways, yo? You 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 not you should not be holding that. You niggas, really should not be holding that. You know, niggas what I'm holding holding the stick with like noodle arms and shit, just hitting shit on, like yo. 
Like, come on, you goofy as shit, yeah. You bro, goofy as fuck. And then I, well, another thing I can't stand when these situations happen is that, like, you know, what I'm saying we we do this collective. Oh, we gotta appreciate life, like whole spiel. And then, like, literally, it took a day and a half for like when the whole Meg shit happened. Niggas is calling for this nigga, this nigga, her Meg's boyfriend to go and fucking like go go fight a nigga. Or go like get an altercation with a nigga about some words exchange on like Twitter or something like that, bro. That's not like, like, like it, it's above niggas, bro. To like, we we really won't be free of this shit. It's it's I mean, it's it's that's that's honestly just a part of the society that we live in, though. Honestly, yeah. and it's it's not going to go anywhere as much as niggas might, you know, saying pray for it to go away or. Niggas might, niggas can talk all day. I mean, shit, we talking about ways shit can be prevented. But I mean, this shit is bigger than just us. You know what I'm saying? It's a community. It's a community thing, bro. Um, pretty much like you said, Q, like niggas just don't know how to just handle their emotions. Um, and it's, uh, it's been a, a, a crutch in the black community for a long time, bro. If niggas can just come together like all these other communities do and stand by each other, we would get a lot farther, bro. But we don't, and you see huh? the, what happens. So Right. You're right. You just, you, you exactly right, man. It is bigger than us, in, in a sense, but it also starts with us as well, too. You know, and that comes from all walks of life. You don't gotta be African-American and stand up for African-Americans, vice versa, yeah. whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's why we do things like what we do right here. We talk about it, just like how you were saying. We talk about it because if nobody else, because that's how it, that's how shit gets swept under the rug. When nobody tells about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like we doing right here, continue to talk about it. Carry these conversations into your everyday life. That's why we do things like this because we want people to understand how you know these things affect everyday life. How they might affect you, and you won't even know it. You know what I'm saying? So, all in all, unfortunately, as it always happens. It takes a life for people to be, understand what the fuck is going on in the world. Rest in peace, DJ Take. You know what I'm saying? And I guess we move on. DJ Take. Yeah. Rip, rip, rip. No <clears throat> Hamilton. Well, this ain't the music industry here. And we're going <laughs> to bring these spirits back up again. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about Yo, this. Uh, no. uh, Q. 21. Can you this, do uh, something? Oh, whoa, 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 because you, because here you go, because here this nigga Dre 21. Can you do something for me? And y'all niggas in here bumping that shit in your car, loud as fuck with the bass. But then when I say Quinn, can you do something for me? Now nah, that shit, Bati, right? Yeah. Y'all <laughs> niggas is something else. Yo. You ain't see the, you ain't see the hand swing motion you did with it though, like. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, was, was it was just in that mode. It was just in that mode. It was just in that mode right you know there. What I'm but I was just gonna ask. I mean, damn. I mean, he's getting this off right, I guess. But I was gonna ask y'all, what y'all think of that Twenty One and Drake album? If you have heard it, what you think of it? What you think of the hype surrounding this? Think it's overhyped, underhyped? What y'all think? Start off with mm, anybody. That shit was good, man. That shit was good. I tell you right there, it was good. What you what you like you know, about it? What you dislike about it, man? I like yo. I always love when Drake come through with the raps, yo. You know what I'm saying? Self Drake really ain't my Drake. Pause. You know what I'm saying? I like all the yo. I said, listen. I even gave you the pause. So don't even do that, Lee. I wasn't I even, don't even do that. No, I, uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah I, I, he ahead. likes it. He likes a hard drink. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Go ahead. But he said the hard. <laughs> that's what he said. He said the soft drink ain't it. Pause. <laughs> okay, that's crazy. I like when Drake rap when that nigga get the. Damn, I can't even say spin. Pause. I like when that nigga starts spitting. Pause. Oh, damn. That's just okay. Listen, I like when Drake do his thing, man. That 21 Savage came on there, you know what I'm saying? Bought, bought the breast out of Drake, you know what I'm saying? They bought the best out of each other. Pause. You know what I'm saying? They was doing their thing. Um, and I liked it, man. The beast was tough. The beast was tough. Legs was hard. It was a good album. Okay. That sounds good. Sounds good. Do you get anything from that, Lee? Yeah, my my opinion on it is this. Uh, I don't know when 
21 made this jump. Uh, I don't want to assume that he did any backroom mansion deals. But somewhere along the line, 21 Savage became the nigga that, like, all the top niggas put, like, like get features with. And now he's popping out with an album with Drake. I don't know. Like I said, his last two albums wasn't good enough to me to warrant this. Like, I, I liked I Am, I Was. I liked Savage Mode, too. It was cool. But to warrant, like, a Drake collab album, like, well, I don't know. Was you, I, I was you feeling that, though? You was yeah. feeling it, though, right? Gotta, the combination that that Slaughter Gang. He got it. He got That Slaughter Gang connection was there, man. I'm, I'm pretty but sure. But I will be, I will not, be traveling here soon, so I might bump it up the road or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Get a good, give it a good bump listen. Bump it up the road. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. I'm going I'm to say, uh, I'm pretty sure a handful of people can attest. Uh, of course, solo 21 older, you know what I'm saying? Like older, older 21. That nigga mm-hmm. by itself, we already know what that is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I mean, I'm pretty sure, like I said, people can attest seeing 21 on a feature. That's like, okay. You already know yeah. what you're gonna get. You already know you expecting that verse that's gonna have you, you know what I'm saying, going down yeah, 85, yeah. pushing like 150. You know what I'm saying? Like on some cool shit, like just some floating shit. But I mean, mm-hmm. um chill. I get cool like, shit. on some I mean, chill. Yeah, yo, you're 150 on some cool <laughs> shit. Like <laughs> some chill shit. Shit. Some cool. no, yeah, 150, my nigga. <laughs> on some chill shit. On yeah. some chill <laughs> shit. That's, <laughs> that's if you got I a Hellcat. As if you got a hell cat. Awesome, cool. Why nigga? Why the nigga y'all need to be watching out? Why the nigga who when the cops pull behind him, this nigga black out the lights I and get the off, going. Yeah, under- I take off, <laughs> like I take this off. nigga said, like the third me go. I take. At the third me go. Straight out of there. Hey Lee, I got one thing to say, bro. I didn't buy that damn ghost plate to go over my license plate for it. Mm. I, didn't, I didn't just buy that just for decoration. Oh, I'm shit. I'm going ghost Woo. fucking mode. That hey, nigga is black out the lights, uh, bro. Yeah, I'm telling you. It's not, it's not so, working. Side note, um, so note totally, un- totally unrelated. Do you, by any chance, still have the link that may go directly to where you got that from? Not well, even for me. Of course. Not even I, for me, just yeah, completely yeah. I mean, unrelated. I know you wouldn't need a, such a thing, but I definitely No, no, no. I, I wouldn't. No, my tags yeah. up to date. My tags are up to date. Right, right, right. But um, yeah, from from what I get got from the album, I mean, it was it was cool. It was like, right. I mean, uh, I was fucking with maybe like six, seven songs. But I mean, all in all, the album was straight. Uh, for me, I think I was probably fucking with. Uh, I want to say, I think Broke Boy was probably that's a, that's a nice the one. Best, the better, the better, nice one. one of the better tracks for me, in my opinion. So if tough. I'm going on a rating scale though. Out of ten, I give it a cool seven, seven point five. It was it was cool. Seven. I, I I I cut it on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you cool. cut it. On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I give it that two one. I'm with you on that one. A cool seven point five. Drake did his thing. Twenty one did his thing. wasn't Wasn't anything 7. more. Wasn't anything good. less. Yeah. Wasn't anything more. Wasn't anything special on that it, shit. It That's like. Just- it just Seven met point. the standard, like just you know what I'm saying. But but exactly, but it's good enough that it wouldn't get lost on the playlist. Like right. feel me, while it's out, you know, yeah. so I'm gonna look for some of them right. songs. I'm gonna look right. for some of them songs yeah. for oh, now yeah. while it's hot yeah. right now. Like, you know, over time, the ones like, you you download like, it, and you okay with skipping through the ones you don't really, you know, you don't want to yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I like now, I now. definitely yeah. now that I've heard the whole thing, I definitely do what I do with other albums. So I'll go tough, back and listen to the. You know, delete the tracks I don't want on the album and shit like right. that. But I mean, all in all, it was, yeah. it was cool. Yeah, I need right. to give it a full, full listen through myself, like a thorough, thorough listen through. But the yeah. songs that I have heard, I like the ones that I have heard. I like Rich Flex. That joint was hard. I like um, Rich Flex. No BS. The little no SNL, BS. the little quote unquote yeah. SNL yeah. set that they did. <laughs> That music no video was it. cool, and then the song in itself was hard. Yeah, hold on. I'm, not, I'm speaking not speaking of that. Speaking of that, yo. I know. I feel like you finna say what I'm finna <laughs> yeah, say. Yeah, speaking of that, yo. Listen, listen, yo, listen, yo. Look, yo, Michael B. Jordan, yo. I get it. I understand. Oh, you still that. hurt, dog. I understand, bro. That nigga said. <laughs> he said to the most relatable album in the world. I guess it's her loss. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry for her loss. Yeah, I was like, yo, this nigga her still loss. hurt. Oh one, my god, bro. He one, yo, he missed Lori. I can say that one thing missed. that I thought. One thing that I thought I was definitely led astray is definitely when I heard the first track and I heard nudie. I thought mm. I was gonna get like some features like in the album. 
but just for it to be in that one, it was like oh, it was a teaser. Not on there. It was a oh. teaser. I mean, damn, I gotta listen to it. But like the first track, first like two, two <laughs> oh, five damn, seconds, was not I was there. like, damn. This nigga finna go crazy, ain't he? Yeah, He's gonna get a bitch a nine and a ten. Was beauty was that bitch. Yeah. That, 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 you already know how I'm going. Yeah. That would have set it off for them. Yeah. Niggas love duty. Nudy last time went crazy. <laughs> Nudy last time went crazy. Don't do that. Don't Sprink do that. a little nude on there. Sprinkle a little nude. Sprinkle a little nude in there. Sprinkle a little nude in there. Nah, nah, yeah. to be honest. But y'all not flaming him up for that. Hey, 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 that's crazy, Jay. I'm with light, you. Lightning. Light, light, that's great. That's a little. Lightning. 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 Lightning for that. <laughs> lightning. Just to, <laughs> just, just to end this oh, off, man. finally, because we, we addressed this before, I just want to know, maybe y'all have an answer for me. Why can't niggas just say, man, this album's good anymore? Man, this song is hard. Man, they did a good job on this beat. Because I seen a tweet the other night <clears throat> in reference to this album. I think last night, as a matter of fact. Cause it, oh, no, yeah, other night, probably. That said, and I quote, man. Repeat it word for word? Oh, yeah, I'm going to repeat it word for word. Oh, yeah, I'm saying this word for word. This isn't me. This is a tweet that I found. Niggas can't say music's good no more, and I want to know why. Niggas going instead from, of, from the tweet. Instead of, saying, instead of saying, damn, this shit hard, they did their thing on this, the tweet reads, damn, Drake really fucking these beats from the back while 21 is throat fucking the beats from the front. <laughs> Can anybody can anybody explain I cannot, why niggas can't I say music is just good I anymore? Hey, listen, listen, some, some niggas ears be getting fucked by the music, yo. I guess that's what it is, yo. Oh my god. That Son. wow, nobody, no, okay, that just Man. threw everybody for the but, but, but right here's where my, okay. my mind goes when you say this, bro. At some point while listening to this album, <laughs> that nigga <laughs> in his brain conjured up that he said, Whoa, this really he conjured that in his mind, like he had to think of that yeah, <laughs> while he was God. listening. That nigga draw back on experience. Yeah, he's like, really, fuck. Drake really fucking this beat, bro. Hang on, man. 21 <laughs> about the... crazy. Like, Damn. Yeah. You, you, I... imagine, you imagine, like, you just riding in a whip and a nigga saying that? Damn, Drake fuck. Bobbing his head hard as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Drake fuck. Hey, you on, on, why you look at the side of the window <laughs> like, what the Hey, it's good, bro. You, hey, no. You fucking with it? Yeah, but, yeah, hey, but he watch, fucking that shit from hey, the back. Hey, watch, bro. The nigga, the nigga, he... He hit you with the hey, but hit, hey, hey, twenty one part finna come up. He finna hit the throat in a little man. He finna hit the throat. He finna hit the throat. He said, "Hey, twenty one, oh, come in here. Man. Come in here, twenty one. Go ahead, get in there. <laughs> oh, he finna hit the throat. This is crazy." Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that yeah. that in itself is ridiculous, bro. I, I don't really got much to say about that. I just needed y'all explanation, if any, man, because I just need to know where niggas coming up with this lingo from and when that started becoming the thing. I don't know. Drop Listen, man, that's Drop that's some shit. I don't know even. I don't know where niggas came with that up, y'all. Yo, so I don't know, y'all. <laughs> I was gonna ask y'all a question, yo, because I seen this shit on Twitter. This is real, real, real quick, real quick. Um, niggas asked was like, yo, what, what, what if the hook was Jamaican, yo? Y'all seen that shit, yo? It was like, what if the no, hook was Jamaican? I'm not yeah. seen that. A Jamaican hook? <laughs> like the you. Jamaican Grim Reaper? <laughs> yeah, from yeah, Billy yeah. and Mandy? Oh, yo, Billy. Yeah, oh, nah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Billy. Yo, listen, I gotta, yo, I, they, they came up with some shit. That, you know how hook be like, oh, you know what I'm saying? You, oh, hook, hook smash. They came up with some shit for the Jamaican hook, yo. I'm gonna read it word for word, yo. Asking it all that. Listen, here you go, yo. They said... You want to see me turn bad man? Bad man, me turn then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see me turn bad man? <laughs> hey man, they not fucking with 
<laughs> Yo. Oh hey, God. bro. <laughs> it's about my attendant, yo. Oh, no. Oh, no. Mercy, yo. I don't know. I might need to email Marvel. We not yo. Need <laughs> we need to see that one. We need, need to see that. Freeze. I'll fuck with them. That's a hard <laughs> <laughs> Bruh, Jay, man, Jay, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Marvel picked that up. He might have the hardest quotable since Thanos. I, he might have the hardest quotable <laughs> since <laughs> Thanos. <laughs> that, that'd be crazy. Yo, I'm gonna see if it's on Yeah, yeah, that's tough, yeah. back yo. from the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Jamaica uh, Hulk yeah, definitely. Yeah, all right. Yeah, right. Hey, we can hey, close that episode Lightning. out right there. <laughs> Thank you all for tuning in to another episode of the Geeked Up Podcast oh, by yours man. truly, the Inside Wolves Entertainment crew. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Leave them comments below because we make great conversations not only for ourselves but for you. Yes, yes. Thank you for tuning in, and we are out. For more SI Wolf content, make sure to subscribe and make sure to hit that link tree in our bio to bring you to all our platforms. Let's get it.